And uh, first of all, I would like to thank Matteo Biolatti, who was the ideator of this project and uh, gave me the opportunity to uh, work on this project. Okay, so uh, the human cytomegalovirus is a beta herpes virus. Uh, indeed, uh, it is. It has a really a strict host specificity, a really slow viral cycle, and uh, in addition, it has the ability to establish latency in cells of the myeloid lineage. Uh, as uh, like all the other herpes viruses, it's a DNA virus with a very large uh, genome, which is packaged inside a uh, um, cosaedrical uh, capsid that is surrounded by a tegment layer which is residing between the capsid and the envelope, where all the glycoproteins uh, necessary for the viral, uh, virus uh, attachment and entry are embedded. Um, this uh, uh, human site virus, this uh, herpes virus actually infecting half of our population. And epidemiological studies suggested that actually uh, this is a percentage is changing based on the socioeconomical background of the country. In particular, it has been shown that in developed country, uh, up to 50% of people are infected with the human CMV, while in developing countries, uh, up to 90-100% of the people are actually seropositive for human cytomegalovirus infection. And um, uh, the absence of a licensed vaccine and the limited use of antiviral drugs uh, 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 remain a barrier in order to combat uh, this kind of infection. Uh, human CMV normally uh, goes asymptomatically in uh, immunocompetent uh, uh, patients, uh, leading to a flu-like syndrome uh, that very rarely can uh, uh, lead to severe consequences, while the problem, the huge burden, is uh, in uh, immunocompromised patients such as transplanted recipients or, for example, AIDS patients, where it can lead to the so-called uh, human CMV diseases with uh, retinitis, uh, hepatitis, or pneumonia, for example. Uh, in addition to this, uh, uh, in developed countries, human CMV is actually the most common cause of congenital malformation, leading to uh, mental retardation, deafness, uh, and uh, developmental disabilities. Um, in addition to this, like uh, uh, there are recent uh, uh, evidence, it is becoming um, like um, interesting to understand that human CMV can be related to age-related diseases. In particular, what we know is that uh, after a primary infection, uh, the host gets infected for life, and human CMV can uh, establish a persistent chronic-related infection. This virus can then react can reactivate later in time, leading to um, and contribute to the development of other uh, diseases. In particular, it has been observed to be related to cancer. In particular, it has been associated to glioblastoma. It has been associated with certain types of autoimmune diseases, in particular rheumatoid arthritis or some uh, uh, neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer or Parkinson. And last but not least, also to atherosclerosis. In uh, uh, particular, uh, human CMV has been shown to infect our tick endothelial cells that can become a source of infection leading to tissue damage with, uh, in some cases, also heart failure. So behind all of this, uh, it has been demonstrated that this virus is actually able uh, to manipulate the host cells, in particular the host cell metabolism, but also the immune system, as we will see in a second. And uh, that's why it's so important for us to understand how this virus is actually interacting with the host cell. Uh, here uh, is a, a really like schematic outline of all the different uh, uh, pathways that are uh, um, manipulated by this virus. In particular, what it's trying to do is trying to increase the carbon flux uh, leading to an increased uptake of glucose and glutamine in order to promote uh, finally uh, to an increase in the lipid fatty acid synthesis that uh, um, is necessary for this virus is in order to promote the build of the 
membranes, uh, in particular of the envelope of the newly, newly synthesized virions, but also in order to lead to the enlargement that is characterizing the cytomegaly. Therefore, the enlargement of the nuclear membrane, the extracellular membrane, and also the um, generation of this viral assembly complex that is uh, um, generated inside the cytoplasm that is necessary for the production of the new particles. So in particular, what these virus would do is try to increase the glucose uptake by uh, upregulation of the glucose transport and, uh, type 4, which has a higher affinity than normal glucose transporters. This will lead to increased glucose that will then make the Krebs cycle run like even faster. And with this, uh, also try to increase the amount of acetyl CoA that is necessary to generate new lipids. In particular, very long fatty acids are necessary for the production of the um, lipids that they will be part of the envelope. Okay. On the other side, we uh, said before that it's very important uh, for this virus to manipulate also and uh, regulate the immune system. Uh, the disease uh, severity and outcome of human CMV infection depends strictly on the early virus host interaction that are made up uh, of, um, in particular, the intrinsic on one side and the innate immune response that uh, respectively are made up of restriction factor that we are going to show and um, see in a second. And on the other side, the innate immune response that is made up of effector cells as uh, neutrophils and K cells, antigen presenting cells. And on the other side, on uh, soluble factors as pro-inflammatory cytokines and interferons. And all together need, uh, are important to suppress and block the human CMV infection in order to promote uh, the formation of the adaptive immune response that will be mounted in order to add, finally, at the end, keep the human CMV infection at bay. So restriction factors, uh, I don't know if you already heard them, they are like molecules that are constitutively expressed inside the cells. And uh, normally they are also in general interferon inducible, and uh, they normally have a specific activity by which they are able to restrict specific uh, uh, virus infections. For human CMV virus in particular, here we have a scheme that is underlining some of the most famous restriction factor acting against the human cytovital virus infection. In particular, it has been observed like an mixed B. Or, for example, the deaminase apobec, which is, uh, for example, acting directly on the genome in order to mutate it and restrict uh, uh, the virus replication. Or, for example, viperin, which is one of the most uh, uh, like studied ones. And for each of these restriction factors, the virus has evolved a mechanism uh, to evade and counteract, uh, counteract its action. And we, in our lab, uh, decided to focus on our attention of, uh, on IFA-16. And uh, <clears throat> IFA-16 is actually a gamma interferon inducible pro uh, protein 16 that belongs to the fine proteins. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> so the fine proteins are uh, um, hematopoietic, uh, and the uh, uh, interferon usable nuclear uh, containing domain proteins. Uh, inside this family, there are four major uh, members that are these four here that you can see here uh, that are IFA16, IFIX, MDA, MNDA, and AM2. And as you can see, they all contain one pyrin domain, important for protein protein interaction and then kin domains that are uh, domains necessary for the nucleic acid uh, binding. In particular, um, <clears throat> IFA16 consists of a pyrin domain at the end terminal part, and then two uh, kin domains consisting of uh, 200 amino acids and two nuclear localization signals. Therefore, in most of cell types, IFA16 is actually uh, predominantly located in the nucleus. Physiologically, it has been shown to be important and able to induce a cycle arrest and also induce senescence by binding to P53. It has been shown to be able to induce also apoptosis and activation of pro-inflammatory molecules. But for us, the most intriguing uh, function of this protein was the ability to, uh, as a DNA sensor and also as a restriction factor. 
In this sense, uh, it has been shown that IFA-16, actually earlier studies suggested that it was mainly a DNA sensor, uh, part of the AIM-2 like uh, receptor that you can see here. And it was normally present in the nucleus where it was able to recognize virus-derived DNA, bind to it, uh, oligomerize in filamentous structure, uh, leading to the translocation into the cytoplasm, in order to enhance the steam TBK1 IR free pathway to promote interferon production and antiviral and with an antiviral activity. <clears throat> but later on, IFA16 has emerged in a role as a restriction factor, in particular against a number of herpes viruses. Between uh, and among these, we know about the uh, herpes simplex virus type 1 against uh, the human cytomegalovirus that we're going to discuss in one second, the Kaposi, the Epstein bar, but also again is, is, is able to restrict HIV1 and the human papilloma virus. And against each virus, uh, IFA16 utilizes uh, a, a different mechanism of action to restrict uh, each one of these. Uh, in uh, our uh, lab, we focus our attention on IFA-16. Uh, we were able to demonstrate that IFA-16 is actually able to restrict human CMV infection. And how is doing this? Uh, and IFA-16, has we show that it is able to bind to the transcription factor SP1. And by sequestration of SP1, there is a transcriptional repression at the promoter level of UL54, which is the DNA polymerase of uh, the, this virus, and therefore restricting the human virus replication. Later on, we also were able to demonstrate that IFA16 is bound by a viral uh, tagment protein called the PP65 that uh, is actually able to exploit its action to bind to the virus tumor in order to transactivate the activation of the immediate early uh, virus protein in order to promote itself uh, the induction of specific viral genes. This interaction may uh, make IFA16 actually more stable and is then uh, uh, phosphorylated by another viral protein called the UL97 in order to translocate IFA16 into the cytoplasm and be entrapped into newly synthesized virions in order to um, exploit the action of IFA16 in uh, new uh, in cells that are going to be infected by the virus in order to again transactivate the viral genes in cells that are going to be infected. And last but not least, but not demonstrated by our lab, uh, it has been shown that IFA16 is also a DNA sensor for human CMV virus because it's able to recognize uh, uh, human CMV DNA and translocate into the nucleus to promote uh, the steam mediated interferon production. So after all these uh, studies, we wanted to try to understand whether uh, IFA16 was also involved in a positive or negative manner in the regulation of the host metabolism that is so important for the, this kind of virus infection. Um, we were not like the first that thought that restriction factor were actually able to manipulate the host metabolism. In particular, uh, a few years ago, it has been demonstrated that Viperin, that we saw before to be a restriction factor for this virus, is able to uh, regulate the cellular lipid metabolism by favoring actually the virus replication, because as you can see here, when the, the, they knock down Viperin, there is a decrease in the food 4 that is the glucose transporter that leads to a decreased lipid synthesis. And the last but not least, a decrease in the infectivity of the virus particles suggests that the is actually supporting the virus replication by favoring uh, and supporting the lipid metabolism. So um, in order to um, do uh, to follow our project, we started the, by the generation of uh, knockout cells uh, in collaboration with the uh, professor Jakobsen from the Oros University. We're using CRISPR-Cas9, we generated the uh, IFA16 knockout cells and uh, the knockout was, the most, was validated by Western Blotted and also genetically by tidy TD analysis. And first of all, uh, we wanted to understand whether 
uh, IFA-16 was important in the glucose metabolism, knowing that the human CMV is able to, uh, upon infection, accelerate the glucose uh, uh, consumption inside infected cells, as you can see here. In comparison to mock infected cells, there is a stronger um, uptake in infected cells, and this is mediated by an upregulation of GLUT4 uh, and by a repression of the GLUT1, which is the canonical glucose transporter inside the human fibroblasts. And this suppression is actually mediated by a viral protein, which is uh, EA72, because you can see here there is a decrease of GLUT1 mediated by this, uh, the transfection of these uh, viral proteins. And that is uh, glucose consumption, this glucose uptake is actually very important because when uh, uh, they use the indivinavir, indivinavir to uh, block the glucose uptake, there is a strong decrease in the viral type. I suggest that it's very important for the infectivity. <clears throat> uh, for the yeah, infectivity of the new progeny. So first of all, we decided to understand whether IFA-16 was uh, able to regulate the induction, the GUT4 expression. So we infected wild type and inf in IFA-16 knockout cells and 24 hour post-infection, we observed that there was an induction of GUT4 as expected. It was even more enhanced in uh, IFA-16 knockout cells, suggesting that uh, IFA-16 is actually repressing the regulation of the GLUT4 um, transcription. In parallel, we also measure the glucose concentration of the supernatants of our infected cells. And at different time points post-infection, we observed that there was uh, an increased glucose consumption that was even more remarked in IFA-16 novel cells at 24, 48, and 72 hours post-infection that was paralleled later time uh, post-infection. And this was also uh, virus dependent because at increasing MOIs, we saw that the glucose consumption was even more accelerated as you can see at the different time points. So these uh, results like, uh, uh, indicated us that uh, uh, IFA-16 actually able to negatively regulate uh, the GLUT4 uh, transcription by uh, leading to uh, uh, reduced uh, glucose consumption. Uh, so at this point, it was uh, uh, what we knew from the literature was that the glucose metabolism, in particular the GLUT uh, expression, is regulated by specific transcription factors uh, that are two, in particular that are CRABP or SHRABP, but only CRABP is able to regulate the glucose metabolism. And this is the, um, the protein we are talking about, CRABP, that is a carbohydrate binding responsive element. And uh, is made up of two major uh, isoforms, the alpha one, that is the canonical one, and the beta, which is a truncated form, that are transcription factors that are normally dephosphorylated, they translocate into the nucleus, leading to the transcription of CRABP target genes. And this CRABP is actually induced, as you can see here, upon infection. And they, when they are knocked down, they are very important for the viral replication. Indeed, there is a strong uh, inhibition in the viral titers. And they have demonstrated to be important in the induction of the glucose transportants, in particular of GLUT4 and of GLUT2, as you can see here, when they knock down the CRABP. And they are essential then in turn uh, for the nuclear biosynthesis and also for the lipogenesis. <clears throat> so at this point, we decided to uh, evaluate whether the CRABP expression was uh, modulated uh, uh, in uh, IFA-16 knockout cells. And as you can see here, 24 hour post infection, we observe a slight induction of CRABP that was uh, remarkably upregulated in IFA-16 knockout cells. And uh, we then decided to evaluate whether CRABP was actually more activated in knockout cells. So we performed uh, immunofluorescence studies uh, at 24 hours post infection in wild type and knockout cells that were infected. And uh, as you can see, maybe a little bit here, there was a uh, stronger, like uh, enhanced nuclear signal in the, uh, of CRABP in IFA 16 knockout cells that. Uh, was uh, uh, 
um, quantitative less test there where we could observe that there was a stronger like uh, uh, nuclear translocation of PBP in alpha 16 knockout cells and therefore for this reason we decided then to understand whether alpha 16 and PBP was actually able to interact in the nucleus upon infection so to do this we um, utilize a proximity ligation assay also known as PLA where you can get a positive signal or a better a positive dot at the confocal images uh, when two molecules are less than 40 nanometer distant. And as you can see here, um, <clears throat> upon infection using antibodies against IP16 and CRABP, we could observe a strong, I mean, an increased number of dots uh, in human CMV infected cells in comparison to the uninfected cells. And this was uh, again uh, calculated and was shown to be significantly um, augmented uh, in infected cells at so 24 hours post infection. To uh, finally validate that there was an interaction between IFA 16 and PREDP, we performed co immunoprecipitation studies where we uh, transfected uh, a plasmid and put in the hemagglutinin intact the Krabi P. Um, and we then, uh, after infection, perform uh, immunoprecipitation of this protein that led to the identification of IFA16. And by reciprocal uh, immunoprecipitation, we were able to immunoprecipitate IFA16 and detect uh, in the lysates the presence of Krabi P, suggesting these pro proteins are actually directly uh, interacting. To functionally validate this uh, uh, complex that was formed, we then perform chip analysis. Uh, and so after transfection and knockdown of PREBP using CIRNA, uh, we infected our cells and performed chip analysis. And uh, what uh, we could observe was that uh, by immunoprecipitating alpha 16, we, would, uh, we were able to uh, immunoprecipitate uh, um, the good for promoter, in particular the sequence uh, uh, related to the Krabi P uh, responsive element that was uh, strongly enriched uh, uh, in uh, human CMV infected cells that were similar uh, control transfected. And uh, as you can see here, when we knock down Krabi P, the binding of IFA16 to the GUT4 uh, promoter was even higher, suggesting that there is a competition uh, of these two proteins uh, on the DNA. And this uh, uh, binding was completely abrogated uh, in IFA16 of our cells uh, as expected. To understand whether um, this interaction was actually uh, able to uh, repress the good for um, promoter activation, we took advantage of uh, luciferase reporter assay. Uh, we generated two uh, plasmids where the luciferase was cloned downstream of the good for promoter that was full length or mutated in the, in the region where there was a uh, PREBP responsive element, so a mutant that was lacking the core read, that is the, what we know as the PREBP responsive elements. And after transfection of this uh, Lucifer report to plasmids, uh, together with the, uh, the Sirna PREBP, in order to knock down PREBP, as we were saying before, we observed that the upon human CMV infection in the Sirna control, there was a, a strong good for promoter activation in wild type cells as expected. But in the absence of IFA16, this activation was even higher, again suggesting that IFA16 is able to repress the good for promoter activation, as we were seeing at the beginning. And when uh, the cells were transfected with the Sirna Crab, this activation was completely abrogating, suggesting that GUT4 is actually uh, essential for the GUT4 promoter activation. <clears throat> so, at this point, uh, we wanted to understand whether alpha-16 was ultimately also important in the modulation of the lipid metabolism. And uh, what we know is that, the, as we were seeing before, 
this virus infection is able to promote lipid synthesis. In order to do this, it's normally uh, upregulating specific, specific genes as SCC1 or FAS and SCL, as we will see in a second, in order to promote the formation of uh, malonyl CoA, which is the subunit, in, subunit necessary for the elongation and production of long, cha uh, long chain fatty acids and very long fatty acids, as we were seeing at the beginning. And so the virus is also able to induce specific elongases in order to produce very long chain fatty acids that are then utilized for the envelope of the new progeny. In particular, it has been shown that the, the virus is able to uh, induce one specific member, one specific elongase named elongase 7, in a ferric mediated manner. That is the one leading to the production of very long chain that, yes, that are saturated, that are important for the infectious variants. So, first of all, we uh, determine whether these lipogenic enzymes were. Uh, upregulated or not in wild type and knockout cells. So upon infection, we observed that ACL and FAS were both strongly upregulated in comparison to IFA16 uh, in uh, IFA16 knockout, knockout cells in comparison to the wild type, where while ACC was, uh, the levels of ACC were kind of comparable between the two cell lines. And uh, similarly, also the elongase 7 was also upregulated in IP16 knockout cells upon infection in comparison to wild type cells at 24 and 48 hours post infection. So at this point, uh, uh, we finally wanted to um, perform lipidomics in order to understand which one were the lipid species that were differently regulated. Uh, in um, the absence or presence of IPA16. So we mm, perform lipidomic analysis in collaboration with Veronika Havel-Belka from the University of Dansk in Poland. And uh, as uh, uh, a good control, we could observe that uh, uh, upon infection, wild type cells uh, have an induction of very long uh, fatty acid chain, as you can see here. Thank you. Sorry. Okay, as you can see here, there was a strong upregulation upon infection of all these uh, uh, phospholipids with very long chain fatty acids. And when we analyzed the knockout uh, versus the wild type cells, we observed that there was some differences between the two cell lines, uh, even though um, not all the different lipid species were equally affected. In particular, in already in uninfected cells, we were able to observe that uh, some uh, um, lipids with medium chain were downregulated, while the very long fatty acids were all uh, upregulated in uh, IFA16 knockout cells. When we checked then the lipid species upon infection, similarly, what we could observe was that uh, phospholipids with very long fatty acids, I mean, the major fraction were actually upregulated, where the once with the medium chain were uh, all substantially downregulated in uh, knockout cells in comparison to the wild type cells. Interestingly, um, there was a massive accumulation of cholesterol esters um, that were all upregulated all the, in the total level, also the individual levels uh, in uh, knockout cells, uh, suggesting that, that this protein is actually important for uh, their accumulation. What we know from the literature was that uh, cholesterol esters actually accumulate starting from cholesterol due to some enzyme that uh, are SOAT proteins. And in particular, we know that human CMV uses SOAT1 to um, induce the accumulation of cholesterol esters, but uh, their function is not known for the virus infection. Indeed, uh, it has been shown that some SOAT1 uh, inhibitors are not able to modulate the infectivity of the virus particle, suggesting that uh, perhaps these uh, uh, lipids are not essential for the virus repl uh, replication, but they might have uh, some other function. And interestingly, uh, these uh, lipids are very important uh, in the establishment of atherosclerosis that is so related to human CMV infection. 
So we also decided to check the levels at the transcriptional level of SOT1. And as expected, we observe a stronger induction of SOT1 and at the transcriptional level in comparison to wild type cells upon infection. And lastly, we decided to understand whether alpha-16 was affecting the infectivity of the viral particles starting from the fact that it is also a restriction factor. So we um, went to um, perform a Western block in order to understand whether, again, also in our knockout cells, um, there was a stronger um, UNC replication starting from the fact that it's a restriction factor. And indeed, we observed that all the different viral proteins were upregulated in IPA-16 knockout cells as expected. And similarly, also the intracellular viral load was uh, um, actually uh, increased in IFS 16 knockout cells in comparison to the wild type. But when we analyzed the particles that were released in the supernatant, what we uh, measured was that there was a similar number of uh, viral genome copies between wild type and knockout cells at 144 hours post infection. But actually, uh, the viral titers uh, are pretty different, meaning that uh, while uh, we have the same number of particles in the supernatant, uh, they are more infectious in IFA-16 knockout cells. And this was demonstrated by the fact that uh, when we measure the ratio of uh, genome to infectious titers, this was uh, higher in uh, wild type cells and it was lower, and the higher is the ratio the lower is the infectivity of the particles, suggesting that FS16 is actually negatively regulating the host metabolism in order to uh, reduce the infectivity of these particles. <clears throat> so I hope I was able to show you that IFA16 is actually able to modulate the host metabolism, in particular uh, by uh, preventing uh, the GLUT4 uh, expression, in particular by acting on the crab uh, um, mediated glut for uh, expression. And this will in turn lead to reduced fatty acid synthesis. As you can see here, they will at the end uh, reduce the infectivity of the virus particles that are uh, released. So uh, um, it's very important for us because uh, we were able to identify a previously unknown mechanism utilized by this restriction factor that is also able to modulate uh, the host metabolism upon human CMV infection. And uh, with this, uh, um, I would like to thank all our, like the lab, all our collaborators and you for your attention. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to take them.